Okay guys, so today we're gonna be doing a little bit different thing than I normally do, which is dousing myself in Mountain Dew, but we're gonna be reviewing a nice product today. So today we're going to be reviewing a monitor specifically, the Port Keys BM7. As you guys know, monitors are used so much in the film world. I am constantly needing wireless video, I am constantly needing um, an onboard monitor. As a cam op, as a DP, I'm always looking for onboard monitors. But recently I was looking into some monitors that may suit me in all areas that are not onboard monitors. I do a lot of wireless video first ACing, so it's nice when you just put a monitor on a stand and you get the chance to pull focus away from the camera and not worry about touching the camera, not worrying about messing up your cam op, not worrying about the camera moving around as I'm trying to pull focus. Okay guys, so what's in the box exactly when they send you your nice Port Keys BM7? Well, they give you a nice case, which I absolutely love. Some companies will just give you a cardboard case, but this one actually gives you a Pelican style case. When you open it up, you first get the monitor. Uh, this monitor comes with a V-mount plate and a dual MPF plate that you can add on. Other accessories that you get, you do get a power cable that is a D-tap cable, um, which I know I will be using a ton. If I ever use this monitor as an onboard monitor, I will probably not be putting a big V-mount battery on it. They give you a screw plate. Um, if you don't run either the adapter or the plate or the V-mount plate, you can screw this on just as a nice cover. They give you a flash drive for software firmware updates that will be coming in the future. Um, then when you remove the padding under here, they give you a, another cover for your screen. Then they give you a nice wipe, which is always nice to have. So let's talk about the physical specs of this monitor first. Um, it has SDI in and out and HDMI in and out. It has quarter 20 threading on the top, both sides and the bottom, which is great. I know I've used a lot of monitors that only have some of the sides and this allows me to mount it in all sorts of different ways. This monitor is about 30 grams in weight, which if you compare it to many other monitors on the market, it's definitely a heavier monitor. This monitor is an ultra bright monitor at 2000 nits brightness. It, it has anamorphic de-squeezing. It has great focus peaking. It has a nice contrast. The monitor does not offer touch screen, obviously, but it does have a really easy menu system. There's a menu wheel that operates as the scrolling wheel. And if you push the button, it also operates as the enter button. You have the input button up top, which offers your toggling between SDI and HDMI, as well as you have four programmable buttons. I need um, my focus peaking. I may need several other settings. I may need to be able to toggle between different aspect ratios, different anamorphic squeezings and I can program four of these buttons. The programming on them is quite simple, going into the menu and you can easily just go through and program your F1, your F2, your F3, and your F4. It does everything you really need out of a monitor unless you're looking to record from a monitor, which that's not what this monitor is for. One thing that I personally love about this monitor is the fact that it is V-mount and then they give you a dual MPF adapter that goes on there. The beauty that I love most about going V-mount is the fact that it has a D-tap plate on it. So when I'm doing wireless video as a first AC, I will always have my receiver. Um, I use Hollyland Cosmo 500s and Cosmo 600s. This allows me to now power my Cosmo off of the monitor and the V-mount battery that's gonna be on here. Another key feature that I've loved about this is it has a 178 degree viewing angle. It is nice where someone can be standing off to the side of me and still see the picture instead of leaning right over my shoulder while I'm trying to pull focus. So, now one thing I definitely know we need to talk about is price point with this monitor. This monitor falls in at just under $500 at $499 on Amazon. Portkey's other seven inch monitor is under $300. They have been making quality monitors for quite some time now that are half 
the price of other monitors on the market. There's two main things that a lot of people that I've seen have had issues with this monitor. And this, the two main issues that I've seen are the two main complaints that I've seen is the fact that one, it's too heavy and two, when you max out the brightness or turn up the brightness at all, you can have a low brightness, a medium brightness, and a high brightness. From what I've noticed, the medium and the high brightness both start the fan. I've heard some rumors of possibly being able to turn those fans off by yourself via a setting in later firmware updates. I'd love to see that or even see an automatic fan. In our tests and our first shoot, we found putting it at its high brightness the fan was a bit noisy if you were in a quiet set. If you're outside, I was standing next to this monitor and still it was not as loud as the wind. So unless you're gonna put your mic right up to this monitor, it, it's not that bad. But again, if you're using it on a set, you're most likely not gonna need to pump it up to 2000 nits. You're probably gonna keep it on its lowest backlight. So I'd argue that why everyone's complaining about it is irrelevant to begin with. I'd argue two things with this monitor. Buying it, you know what you're getting. You are getting a monitor that is 2000 nits in brightness and you are getting a monitor that is meant to take a little bit of a beating. I would not say that if you are looking for an onboard monitor, this monitor is your monitor. Port Keys makes another 7 inch monitor that would be perfect for, a, for an onboard monitor. I've used it before as an onboard monitor. They make it the BM5 as well that is an onboard monitor that is compatible with other Blackmagic cameras. I primarily shoot on the Ursa Mini Pro G2. I used to own the Ursa Mini Pro G1 and I, now I own an Aria Mira. So, Having an onboard monitor, especially for the Amira, is something that is needed. So I will probably be looking towards the BM5 for my onboard monitor versus something as hefty as this monitor. So yeah, that's the Port Keys BM7. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this review. If you guys have any questions about this monitor, feel free to comment down below. I would love to also hear your uh, responses. If you do get the monitor, I would love to hear your reviews on the monitor. I would love to know more about what videos I should do next, what products I should review. I know I have some more Mountain Dew things planned for you guys. Um, I'm planning on reviewing a couple other products, doing um, a first AC kit walkthrough. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, but yeah, if you have any videos uh, in mind that you want to see done, if you have any products you want to review, feel free to hit hit me up. Um, if you follow either one of my Instagrams, I walk, no, I run, or Isaiah Walk DP, um, and you see some of the rigs that I build or the stills, feel free to ask questions. I'll always be willing to do videos on them. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm so excited to do more videos in the future, and I'm excited to do more of my own content. That's something that I've been looking to do for a long time, so I'm excited to get all this going. So thank you guys for allowing me to do this and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.